Hi, welcome back to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. In this video, I'm going to take a look at these two different types of lawnmowers behind me and show you 20 reasons why they may not start. Not only am I going to show you the 20 reasons why they won't start, I'm going to show you how to fix them as well. Link to other popular videos that will help you get your petrol lawnmower up and running again. I've got my list of 20 here. We'll see how we get on. Let's get started straight away. You can see here I've got two different types of lawnmower. One's got a Briggs and Stratton engine, the other one's got an engine that's powered by Mountfield. I'm going to quickly show you the differences between these two common types of lawnmowers and also a little ticket on these that you'll need to quote if you need any spare parts as well. So if you subscribe to my channel you'll see thousands of videos on these lawnmowers. These are the Briggs and Stratton engine ones and I really like these. Really simple to set up. You've got a really simple carburetor here, petrol tank, then you've got your air filter set up. All these are very similar, just got different covers on them. And this engine here says powered by Mountfield on it. And this one is a little bit more tricky. You've got a few more springs and linkages and stuff. But under here on this little white ticket here, it says SV150. That's the type of engine it's got in it. And if you're going to need some spares for these lawnmowers, they've generally got a service ticket on them here that you'll need to quote. And one company I use for these spares quite regularly is Garden Hire Spares here in the UK. So looking on there for a ticket, sometimes it's on the back here and on this older style one here, you'll see you've got a service ticket here. So let's get on with the tips. I just wanted to show you that in case you need to buy any parts. And there are lots of parts listed in the description of this video as well, particularly for these little Briggs engines. Okay, we're going to start with tip number one. We're going to start really obvious and we're going to move on, but normally the obvious things are the things that cause you the most problems. So don't disregard this step. I've repaired thousands of these and I want to quickly show you something. In here, you can change your spark plug over like this, look. Just don't disregard this step. This is super, super important. What I've got in here is an NGK B2 LM spark plug and I use these in these little Briggs engines and these SV150 engines and these are linked in the description. Do not buy cheap ones off eBay or from B&Q, the ones with the little green writing on, they do not work. I've, I've tried this, I've picked up these lawnmowers and sold them for up to around £500 simply by doing the repair of putting a decent NGK spark plug in it. Even the new ones that you can buy, do not presume that they work. You've really got to be very careful. So tip number one is to buy a decent quality NGK spark plug tighten that back up and pop that back on and that's tip number one all right this is um, me just cutting in from the future I've made a huge mistake here I've deleted well I had deleted all the footage of this video off the memory card off the computer off the camera everywhere so I've had to buy some software to get all these clips back on here but tip number two is missing. Tip number two was just basically saying you make sure you've got some fuel, which sounds quite obvious. But on some mowers, there's a fuel tap. You want to make sure the fuel tap that's connected to the fuel line is turned on. If it's this way up, it's generally turned off. It needs to be kind of horizontal. There's a little tap on the Hondas and some of the bigger mowers. So, oh, I'm so glad I've got this. It's cost me around, I don't know, about £57 on some software online to be able to recover all the, these um, actual clips from the SD card uh, uh, anyway I won't get into it but I've got some new software kept the files in a different place on the computer and deleted the wrong ones off and oh, I felt ill to be honest but I've paid the money so you can all watch this video but and I hate to do this there's a link in the description just to um, a PayPal page if you wanted to leave me a pound or a dollar or 50p just to try and recover some of that I really would appreciate it but um, yeah, I'm just gutted I've done it to be honest, but I've got all the footage pretty much There's a few little bits that are dodgy, but clip, num uh, clip number two and tip number two Was uh, make sure you've got some fuel, make sure the fuel taps on as well Tip number three, carburettors, there's a lot of advanced things you can talk about with this But I'm going to keep it simple, two different type of carburettors on these two different types of mowers This one here has this carb under here which is attached to the tank And this one has a little diaphragm and gasket set in, you need to make sure that that is serviced and it works correctly otherwise it won't pump the fuel through also the cab could be dirty that's the main thing with that I'm going to link in the description to a video showing you how to replace that don't tamper with the governor springs uh, behind the air filter box it won't make any difference as long as they're sat where they should be but this type of lawnmower is a different animal under here you have a bowl style carburetor hopefully you can just about see in here where I've 
where I've got my finger there, this has got like a ball style carburetor and this one doesn't have a diaphragm and gasket and if you have a lawnmower that has no fuel you're going to need to clean the carburetor. And today is your lucky day if you've got this mower because in the top right hand corner of your screen right now you're going to see a link to a card where I cleaned and serviced the carburetor on this lawnmower just yesterday. Tip number four, we're going to check we've got some spark. It's no good having a lawnmower that doesn't have a spark plug that sparks. Sounds pretty obvious, right? But there's a few things can catch you out. In this video later on, I'm going to go into a bit more depth about what to do if you've got a lawnmower that actually has spark but doesn't start because it could still have spark and still not start, even if it's got all the other elements it needs. So basically, if you've got a lawnmower that has spark, is getting fuel through to the carb and the carb's clean, it has compression when you pull it over the lawnmower should start, you need those three things generally for a lawnmower to start that's spark, fuel and compression with those three things you should have a lawnmower that starts unless you've got some strange circumstances which I'm going to show you in this video so stick around till the end because I'm going to cover those things so with this, to check for spark what you can do you can put your actual spark plug back in here and clip it on here touch this against something metal, I suggest doing this in your garage really, touch this against something metal like this, see the tip, this little tip here, set that against something metal like that, don't hold onto the plug, hold onto the rubber bit, like that, and get someone to pull the cord, release the handle at the top, pull the cord, watch for spark, and that way you know for sure if you've got spark, and I'm going to combine these two tips into one, I once did a 100 mile round trip for a petrol lawnmower, I paid about £10 for, and the only thing that was wrong with it was the fact that this lead here see how it's got this little silver circular part, no idea what it's called we don't care do we, nobody cares basically it got crushed and nipped into one, stood on it or kicked it or whatever and it didn't click on here so make sure that the inside of that lead, listen kind of clicks on and you get a good seal between this actual ignition coil lead here, this spark plug lead and the spark plug make sure that the inner part is in good order and actually connecting so if you've not visited my channel before i've probably got around about a thousand videos on here and i'd love to be able to link to them all in the top right hand corner for all the ones that are relevant to these videos but i can only link to four or five so what i'm going to do in the description of this video i'm going to link to some of the best videos for servicing these two types of lawnmowers including servicing the carburetor and checking for all these faults as well so you can get a bit more in depth i'm going to put the playlists at the end of this video for these two types of engines i'm going to link to loads of videos in the description so do go down there and look in the description and while you're there leave me a comment click like and um, write something i'd love to hear from you i really would and if you could subscribe i would appreciate that as well now in the next few tips I'm going to get a bit more advanced, a bit more technical on things that you might not think of looking for while your lawnmower might not start. But before I do that I just want to cover the, the three basic aspects I've already kind of mentioned that you'll need for a lawnmower to start. You're going to need fuel to be getting through to the carburetor, you're going to need spark and when you pull the lawnmower over you're going to need compression. See what I did? Pulled it over. You're going to need compression, that means when you pull the cord there should be some resistance there. If there isn't it probably means you haven't got compression. So I'm going to check a few things on my mower now, I'm going to show you in the next tip a few things that might cause you not to have good compression on your lawnmower. Okay so I'm going to quickly show you exactly what I mean by compression really. When you go to start up the mower you're going to want to release the brake, this is like a safety feature but when you pull the cord you should feel some resistance you should feel, like you can see, it takes a bit of effort, you should feel the engine turn over and you should also see, if, if you can see through the little gaps here, you should also see the engine turning. So I would be happy with that, that I had compression and feel it. So there's a few reasons why you may not have comp compression on lawnmower and some of them aren't very obvious. I'm going to share a little bit of experience, I've been doing this nearly 10 years and a few things to look at if you don't think your lawnmower has any compression. So again I'm going to use a bit of experience, I'm going to tell you something that I came across once when I went to pick a lawnmower up. Somebody said it had no compression and this one was a great fix and made me a great sale so I'm going to share it with you now. So I'm going to quickly take off this recoil cover here, like this when you're doing any repair with a mower, no matter what it is please take off that spark plug lead, I normally take it off the recoil cover but I want to cover you and myself, make sure you take them off 
I'm going to show you something on the underside of here. On the underside of these recoil covers, see how these parts all move about? Well these are different, these are slightly different, these metal parts kind of lift up. But on the Briggs engines, what happens when you pull the cord, on the outside of the spool there's two little white pieces of plastic that shoot out. And I've had a lawnmower before where it hadn't been run for a long time, when you pulled the cord, basically the two bits of plastic didn't come out, they didn't like self expand. And then what happens is, it doesn't catch on the engine flywheel here, doesn't turn the flywheel and when you pull the lawnmower over it pulls over really easily because obviously it's not catching on the actual flywheel so make sure if you take the recoil off like I've done here it's all in good order and if you've got a standard Briggs one when you pull the cord make sure there's two little white parts that plastic parts that spring out make sure they're springing out if they're not get a little bit WD-40 free them off and you'll find it catches the engine right I'm going the extra mile here didn't really want to have to get into digging through my boxes of spare so I'm doing this to help so please leave me a comment or subscribe or whatever YouTube asks you to do. This is the Briggs type, this is the opposite type to the one I've just shown you, it's probably a better example. Can you see the little white bits that pop out there? When you pull the cord here, they pop out. You might find from time to time you pick a lawnmower up, especially if it's been stood outside, when you pull the cord these two white bits don't pop out, they don't engage with the engine and don't turn the engine over and it might catch you out and make you think that you've got a lawnmower with no compression. <laughs> I've just realised that I've no idea what tip number I'm on now. From now on these shall be known as the next tip. I'm just going to show you everything I know about these mowers and why they won't start. Right, the next compression thing you want to check, and you should probably check this if you're going to buy a lawnmower to repair it for profit, is that the actual compression isn't broken because the engine's broken. And you can quickly kind of check most of this by removing the spark plug again. So what I want to check here to make sure I've got compression is that the actual piston is going up and down so you can do this by basically putting something either a straw or a pencil in here and pulling the mower over to pull the mower over I'm going to have to clamp the handle at the top I'm going to make sure that basically this part here moves up and down so you can feel the piston going up and down I've got the spark plug out and there's no chance of this starting I'm going to clamp the brake and that allows me to be able to pull this mower over easy because it's taken the brake off the flywheel so I can now put this in here and I can pull the pull cord easily and it should allow it all to turn and see if this piston goes up and down so let's try it I be able to put this in here now and I can see if I pull the cord see how it goes up and down watch that's how you know the piston hasn't snapped and that's something else you'll want to look for if you're struggling to get compression and if you're a little bit more advanced other things you can look for uh, behind the head here there's an engine head gasket that could have got a hole in or perished and also where the carb this carburetor meets an inlet manifold that runs across it there's actually um, I've seen those on time from time to time they actually have a slit in them and they're sucking air in and you can lose compression as well so they're the main things to look for when thinking about having a lawnmower that's got some good compression. Right, this tip, which is probably tip 5 or 8 or 54 or something, this is the next tip. I'm going to talk about the kill switch. This is important, particularly on this type of lawnmower. This goes wrong a lot on this type of lawnmower. So, these lawnmowers have a safety feature called a dead man's handle, which is effectively this. You pull this up. And you have to pull this so when you release it the engine stops it's to stop children getting their fingers and feet under it and animals getting harmed and stuff this one has the same feature and again it releases a brake you can see the cable down here pulls across it releases a brake and it activates a kill switch now what the kill switch does is it disengages and when it disengages it allows spark to be sent down to the spark plug so if it doesn't disengage you won't get spark so if you've got a lawnmower with no spark there's a good chance it's because of this now what you need to do is I've just said activate this handle now on these SV150 engines if you listen here you'll see when this cable pulls you'll hear a click you have to hear that click if you don't hear that micro switch click like that it won't allow spark to be sent from the ignition coil down to the spark plug so make sure this cable is in good order when you pull this make sure you can hear a click and that will tell you if the micro switch is working and it works slightly differently on these Briggs mowers but the most times I see one without a spark it's on this type of engine 
So again, this has a different type of handle, but effectively it does the same thing. You pull this and it releases the brake. You can probably just about see down here the cable. You can see it moving. When that pulls across, it releases the brake from the flywheel and it also moves a little switch away and disconnects the actual kill switch, which makes it have a spark. And it must disconnect to allow the spark. So you want to make sure that all these things are moving freely. And in a second, I'm going to take the cover off this lawnmower and this lawnmower will show you where the kill switch is. I'm going to show you where the wires are as well because sometimes, particularly on these Briggs ones, you might have all this part moving correctly, but the wire might be damaged because it's very thin. So on this type of mower, this is the SV150 engine you'll see here. This is where the actual switch is here. And when you pull in the cable, this moves away. So I'll put the camera on the tripod and I'll show you it moving away and show you how it should actually be activated. Right, so I'm going to step around the back of the mower and I'm going to pull this dead man's handle, move the cable, and you can see how this works. So if you've had a tinker about with this, that's how it should work. You can see it just disconnects and allows this part to move far enough. There's a little switch there at the top of my fingernail that needs to be able to move in and out and click. And I keep talking about the brake. This part here is the brake. So when you let go of the handle, this brake goes against the flywheel and stops it spinning. So now I'm going to show you the same thing really on the Briggs engine. This is a Briggs and Stratton engine. Again the handle there and I've shown you before this actual cable. And you'll probably just about see here and see the kill switch there. You can see how that part moves away and it basically just moves away far enough it actually drops down a little bit and it has to disconnect. Sometimes it only takes a little bit of dirt in there to stop you getting the disconnection and then you won't get spark. The other thing I wanted to mention to you is as well is that this little wire here you can see here runs, you're going to take this recoil cover off with three 10mm bolts, take it off. The little wire runs from here and it runs right round underneath this actual starter and occasionally when you drop the starter on you can land it on the wire and split or damage the wire so if the kill switch looks like it's working and disconnecting properly then check the wire that runs round the actual recoil here and do the same on that one as well generally it's that type of kill switch that don't work with a micro switch that's got a micro switch on this one's got like a kill switch on but they do the same thing there's just a bit of different terminology and stuff but it works really the same way and this has got the brake on as well so check the wires and check the kill switch disconnects that's a really important part of making sure you can get spark right next tip the next thing I'm going to talk about is the ignition coil. Now, I hear a lot of people saying, you know, when I go to like auto jumbles and stuff, that the lawnmowers are chatting about stuff, they say, oh, the coil must have gone. I think I've done probably 2,000 lawnmowers in the last 10 years at least, and I've had one bad ignition coil. So, for that reason, I'm not even really going to show you the ignition coil, although I will show you how to set it. I will leave a link in the description again showing you how to set the gap between the ignition coil and the flywheel if you want that. But most of the time there's a problem with spark and ignition is what I've just shown you. It's the kill switch wire that's broken or it's the kill switch not releasing correctly. It's very rarely the actual ignition coil. The only time it may be the coil is if somebody's already had a mess about with this and they haven't set it correctly. And again, below all the affiliate links in the description and stuff, I will leave a link showing you how to set the ignition coil. But I would um, strongly advise you that it won't be that that's causing the problem of no spark. It's much more likely to be the kill switch, the kill switch wire, or the cable not releasing the kill switch correctly. So I want to answer a question which um, in the early days of me repairing these lawnmowers for profit, I found quite tricky. One thing that a lot of people want to know is how do I know if it's a carburetor issue? I'm going to show you that in the next few um, video clips we're going to film in a second. Basically what you want out of a lawnmower when you pick it up to repair for profit or if it's your own lawnmower you want to get started is you want it to just fire up even for a couple of seconds and if you can get a lawnmower to do that at least you know there's potential that the lawnmower is going to run that tells you it's got compression and it's got spark. There's obviously some fuel related problem. So I'm going to show you a quick way you can test this just to see if you can get your lawnmower running for a few seconds and generally if you can get it run for a few seconds you've got compression, you've got spark and you've got a fuel related error which is normally down to a dirty carb. I'm going to show you one thing you can do to check that right now. So what you're going to need for this next step is a can of something similar to this. This is Easy Start. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to actually put this and fire this down the actual spark plug hole 
and actually pull the lawnmower over. And if I do that and it starts and dies for a few seconds, I know the lawnmower's capable of running and it also tells me that I've just got a fuel starvation problem that's going to be related to the carburetor. So what you would do if you've got a lawnmower like this and you want to find out what the carb issue is, just take the plug out again, pull this lead off. Oh, wrong way on again, look. That's twice I've done that today. Um, take the plug off like this. What you can do is quickly get some of this easy start, give it a bit of a shake up, spray it down the hole, down here like that. Just spray some in there. Quickly put the plug back in to seal it all in there. And then you've got to kind of get it back in as quick as you can. I normally just do a hand tight like that just to try it, put the lead back on, run around the other side and fire it up and what you'll find sometimes is that the lawnmower will run for two or three seconds and then die and that's because it's got a little bit of fuel it can burn and it can actually ignite this spark plug and run and that tells you that even if you fill the fuel tank up the fuel's not getting from your fuel tank from your carb and into where it needs to to actually get this engine running so you've definitely got a fuel starvation issue but if you do that and it does run for a few seconds at least you'll know you've got compression and you've got good spark okay so in this section of the video i want to talk to you about what to do if you've got compression you've got spark you've got fuel and the lawnmower won't start this is um one of those situations that's really frustrating because you put the work in to do the servicing and in theory you've got all those three things to make your lawnmower start but it still doesn't start the common reason i see for this is because the timing of the lawnmower is out what happens and again link in the description to how to how to do this as well what happens is the timing of the flywheel can be slightly out so what you'll what will happen is you'll get spark you'll get compression you've got your fuel but the lawnmower ignition will spark at the incorrect time and if you get this your lawnmower won't start this commonly happens if your lawnmower's hit something if you've hit like a tree stump or um, a drain cover and slightly knocked out the timing what happens at the top of the lawnmower under the starter recoil there's the flywheel and the flywheel has a little keyway in this and the idea of the keyway is to stop the actual whole crankshaft that goes through the mower bending if you hit something hard like a drain cover and what can happen if you catch something is this flywheel this tiny little flywheel can get damaged and it's only a small part but it sits in the center so you've got the flywheel it sits in the center of the flywheel and if it gets knocked it changes where the magnets run around the flywheel it changes the position perhaps from there to there obviously it's magnified as the actual flywheel gets wider the flywheel itself has magnets on which pass the actual ignition coil at a specific time and if it's knocked this keyway and the actual flywheel is slightly shifted these magnets pass the ignition at the incorrect time so you'll still get spark but it'll spark at the incorrect time so in the description of the video there is a link to a video that shows you how to replace the keyway on the crankshaft of these lawnmowers so if you've got a lawnmower that has spark has compression has fuel and for some unknown reason it won't start it could very possibly be the keyway at the top of the crankshaft there is also a keyway at the bottom of the crankshaft but very rarely it's that one that gets hit that stops it running it's usually the one that's connected to the flywheel at the top of the crankshaft so that's something else to check if your lawnmower won't start so i think we'll all agree that this spark plug tool that i keep using the wrong way around has come in very useful today and i'm going to show you something else again sunny day i keep filming into my own shadow um like cliff richard anyway bad joke out the way i want to show you another reason your lawnmower might not start and i see this at auctions quite a lot i'm sure people do this on purpose so people can't start the lawnmower and they don't bid on them what can happen if you put the spark plug in too tightly is that this part here on the top gets bent in if you tighten this back plug in too far it can actually push against the inner parts of the engine here and obviously if there's no gap you won't get a spark so make sure especially if you're buying these at auction to pick up to repair for profit if you can't get one started at an auction make sure some sneaky person hasn't got there before you gone round with a tool like this and actually bent this in like this and just turned it far too tightly in and actually bent that part so if you haven't got a gap in your plug there it won't start right let's talk about getting hydro locked this sounds um, all kind of 
in depth but it's not really what people tend to do with lawnmowers when they can't get them running is like for some reason people like to tip them over or upside down and that's like the worst thing you can possibly do with a petrol lawnmower you're going to get oil and fuel in all the places it doesn't want to go or shouldn't go so what can happen if you've got a lawnmower that won't start is it can get hydro locked and what that means is the oil has gone past the piston again in this spark plug hole here and when you go to pull this over even though you release the dead man's handle when you go to pull it over it's really tight in fact you can hardly pull it and it just won't move at all if you're in that situation what you need to do is you need to get that handy spark plug tool again and you need to take out the spark plug here so you've got just a hole and you need to pull the lawnmower over until all that excess oil spurts out of that hole because it can get locked, the oil can actually lock like, a, like an airlock and you can't actually pull the mower over so if you've tipped your mower over and now it won't pull over at all the chances are that it's hydro locked pull the plug out, pull the actual cord over a few times to release it and it should help you and when it starts up again, if it starts up again then you will find that there's white smoke everywhere make sure there's enough oil in the mower and leave it running and the white smoke even after about 25 minutes half an hour will eventually burn off once it's gone out of the exhaust I want to talk about two stroke fuel and mixing fuel for petrol lawnmowers this is a, a common mistake I see you don't need to mix fuel for these lawnmowers out here these are four stroke lawnmowers the oil you'll need goes in a separate place and I'm going to show you that now actually you don't need to put oil in with a fuel like a two stroke these are four stroke you can run these on normal unleaded petrol they go in here and the lawnmower oil you want to put in here and the oil you want is SAE 30 oil and these take around half a litre of oil both these types of mowers so you don't need to mix the fuel just put normal unleaded fuel in here they're not two stroke these are four stroke engines these two stroke things are more like this I've got under here this um, Ryobi One Kenobi leaf blower and for that sort of thing you want to be mixing your fuel here with some two stroke oil but that's not what these petrol lawnmowers are so if you mix the fuel and it won't run correctly you're going to need to drain that out of there and you're going to need to put some fresh unleaded petrol in there next section a couple of quick tips on another reason or reasons why your lawnmower won't start if you've got grass that's three foot long <laughs> and you wheel your lawnmower onto it you're never going to be able to pull the lawnmower over because the blade isn't being going to be able to spin fast enough for the lawnmower to start so start your lawnmower and if necessary lift the height up to the highest level and start it somewhere where the grass isn't really long now I always start mine on the high level and then drop it down sometimes you might find that your lawnmower starts but you'll also find it's making kind of quite a lot of noise or it's really hard to pull over and you might want to look underneath your lawnmower if you do want to tip your lawnmower up there's a couple of things really you should know you, you could probably put the piston at top dead center like I showed you earlier but one thing to do is make sure you remove the spark plug lead here and if you're going to tip a lawnmower up you want the exhaust side which is this side facing the floor and you're on the carburetor side which is this near side nearest us you want this facing the sky so don't tip it past sort of that point with the spark plug removed I normally leave it against the fence like that and I can have a look underneath now the spark plug's definitely disconnected and I'm looking sometimes I've had like a bottle a plastic bottle wedged between the blade and the deck so that's something to look out for and you can have a look underneath it like that don't tip it past that point you can also tip it backwards that's the recommended way to tip it once I've had it tipped that way as well one thing I like to do as well is just start the mower up as well just make sure it can burn off any excess smoke it may need to just make sure it runs again these lawnmowers really don't like being tipped up one other thing to do is remember to put the spark plug lead back on There we go, don't tip it right over or you're going to be in big trouble. So a bit more of an advanced tip, this is if you've got a slightly different style of lawnmower to this. If you've got a Honda mower or one of the larger engine mowers, you might have overhead valves on the front of here. These occasionally need setting, you'll see a box on the front that says something like OHV. I've actually got videos on how to set those valves 
and the reason I'm mentioning that is because if they aren't set correctly again you might not have the correct compression which makes it very difficult to start or very difficult to pull over and again I will link in the description to the videos that I've got on setting the valves the other thing that I once had on this type of mower and again I will link in the video description to it is behind all this lot behind the head there are two valves that, that effectively move in and out like this and they have valve seats around them and what happened is the valve seat had actually come out of position and it was stopping the valve from opening and closing um, and you'd be very unlucky if that happened but it has happened to me on a couple of occasions so if you're really desperate and you've tried everything else you might want to set the valves and definitely check that they are actually opening and closing so there's a few tips in a second I'm going to give you a little bit of a just a basic buyer's guide so if you're looking to buy second hand or new I'm going to tell you a few things you want to look at with these mowers I'm going to give you a few suggestions of the things that I don't like and I do like as well but I want your comments I want to know what help you'll need with your mower that I didn't cover in this video I want to know if I've helped you or if you didn't like what I said or anything leave me a comment I really really like reading the comments so please do leave me a comment I'm going to take a look at these mowers now with you and I'm going to show you a few things I look for when I'm buying a used lawn mower and if I was buying a brand new one so I'm going to give you a guide first if you're going to look at start repairing these for profit and making yourself a bit of extra income just a, a minute or so of what I look for when I'm, I'm looking to buy and repair these for profit and I generally at least double my money on, on all of these lawnmowers. I think I picked that one up for £40 and I've got that on at 100 at the minute. But when I'm buying these to repair for profit, the, the one that's the easiest to work on is this. You've got the simple setup, there's no fuel line on these. You've got the simple diaphragm and gasket in there. Two bolts you can take off the whole tank, the carb, the air filter and everything. It's really easy and there's one linkage in there to play with. These are the ones you want to start with these are the engines that are a little bit more advanced so if you're starting to repair these for profit and you want to get started make sure you get yourself what's commonly known as on these engines a Briggs Classic or Briggs 35 Classic engines these um, used to be bundled quite a lot with these Mountfield mowers and they tend to have gone away from that now and they'd be branding them with their own sort of um, v35 sv150 their own mountfield engines you can still get them with uh, the briggs engines in i believe but if you're starting to repair for profit you want these brig ones they're getting a little bit older now and there's a new version of them out as well which are also quite easy to work on and these are quite difficult if you've never done it before so things to look for if you're looking to purchase a new petrol lawnmower if you don't need a self-drive if you don't know what a self-drive is this is an extra lever and the wheels turn at the back they'll spin around when you're using it and it pushes it along if you don't actually need a self-drive, if you've got a bit of grass that's about the same size as mine, I would suggest you don't need a self-drive, then do not buy one with a self-drive on because when it breaks, you can't wheel it backwards. That's the only problem if the drive goes at the back. It's very difficult to wheel backwards. You might think it's okay, I can still push it. It isn't as easy as that. And I would definitely, definitely avoid buying a roller, a rear roller lawnmower that's got a self-drive on. What I like to see is uh, a brand where you can buy spare, so Mountfield, McAllister, Briggs and Stratton, Honda. What you don't want is one of these from these cheap supermarkets where you don't know what the engine is, you don't know who makes the deck or anything, because you can lose something so simple and you need one little spare part, such as a, a petrol cap or a cable or I don't know, even a bolt that goes through here or just something and you can't get spares, at least with Mountfield, Honda. McAllister and brands like that you can find the spares online so if I'm looking for a lawnmower what I'm looking for nowadays is I'm looking still looking for a, a solid metal deck a lot of these cheap ones are coming out with plastic decks I've seen them split and crack I've seen the handles come off them and the problem with the plastic ones is they'll sell them telling you that they're lightweight super lightweight easy to manoeuvre the problem with the plastic ones is they don't sit down enough on the grass to be able to make a good job of cutting it uh, another thing that's really super important is it should have a height adjuster on if you see a lawnmower where you can't adjust the height don't buy it because once your lawn is um, past a certain length you're going to really struggle and anything that's not exactly flat it won't cut so I'm looking for a solid deck height adjuster this has got height adjusters at front and rear a lot of the new ones now have a single point height adjuster so you can alter the whole height of the deck from one lever that's good you want a decent grass box or bag this is a combination of both 
bag there and plastic on the top so I like the Briggs engines they're really um, popular really cheap spares to get loads of them listed in the description you may want handles that fall down easily like these some of them come with quick release handles as well now that's something you may want to look for as well and really you want a brand you've heard of don't go too cheap so Mountfield make still make to this day very good lawnmowers even though they're, they're bundling them with their own engine personally the, probably the best one I've seen I'll try and link to it if I can find it in B&Q at least last year anyway was a black McAllister lawnmower it had a steel deck like that and it had this style of Briggs engine in or, or the newer Briggs engine it had height adjusters on it the grass box was a good size um, and it just looked like a good solid mower for a reasonable price and actually always linked to my favourite mower in the description of the video there's always an affiliate link to one that I've got there and I, I kind of weekly keep my eye out and see what's um, actually been on offer and link to ones that I like I never ever link to a lawnmower that I wouldn't personally buy myself but these are good mowers I really still particularly like these old Briggs ones really simple so if I had to pay for either one of these now although this is new and shiny I would still personally buy this one I would still buy the one with the Briggs engine on for myself because when you get problems with these they're more difficult to fix and trying to get into it yourself and, and kind of remedy it's quite difficult to be honest with you compared to this one I love these uh, these old Briggs engines last forever this is my own mower this one I've had this I think I've had it about 20 years and I actually filmed a video on it a while ago where I accidentally sold it, well I didn't accidentally sell it, I sold this to someone about two years later I accidentally bought it back um, I'm just looking for a year on there, I think it's about 2005 so 16 years, 16 year old, it's had a couple of coats of paint on and a bit of a servicing, it's had loads of bits stolen off it to repair these for profit and then I would still go for that over this um, Mountfield engine here but the key thing is with all these mowers with these steel decks is if you keep the underside of them free from grass and don't cut the grass when it's wet then it won't rot. The biggest problem with these decks, which are really quite good decks, is that people don't clean them off at the end of the season and they rot around these parts. All it takes at the end of the season is to pull the plug off, tip it up like I've just shown you against the fence, get a wire brush, scrape all these actual grass deposits off from underneath and it won't rot, it'll last you 15 years at least like mine has, especially with a Briggs engine in. So when you go looking for one, look for a branded mower with a height adjuster, with a nice grass box on, that's a decent size as well. I would still be looking for a Honda or a Briggs engine as well and something you can definitely get parts for. So there we are, we've made it through to the end, but don't go just yet. I've got something to say that's very, very important, and you don't want to miss this. This is really important. If I've helped you and actually helped you save money, save a fortune on buying a new lawnmower with any of these tips, do not leave the video without leaving me a comment, because I definitely, definitely want to hear from you. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment, click like, do all the things that YouTube wants you to do. You'll see in these cards now there's playlists to these videos, there's a full playlist for the Briggs engine, a full playlist for the SV150 engine. Take a look at those and you should be able to get up and running. If you can't, leave me a comment. Thanks for watching. See you next time.